When I was at school, I found it hard with the students because I was like from Serbia and people just gave me shit most of the time. So I just got into a lot of fights and stuff. And I just didn't like really like school at the time. No, not very good. Didn't go very often. No, when I did go, I got in trouble. I don't know, hate everyone there. Not really getting along with anybody at all. School wasn't all that crash hot, but the teachers and that, they would, uh, I wasn't getting the help that I needed. The name Gateway as it implies was about opening the gates so that we could find opportunities for them. Jared in general at school um, had a lot of learning difficulties. The school was trying their best to give him the support that they could, but he needed a lot more. Casey had not liked school for about um, about ten years, I suppose, now. They often have a history of three or four years of problems at school, and sometimes it's a lot longer than that. For instance, their learning has probably been off track for many years because of other issues in their lives. Uh, Robert wasn't progressing in school at all, and I think he's been like that all his life. He's sort of, I think, slipped through the cracks in so many ways all the way through primary school. Uh, teachers, of course, tended to focus on his behaviour rather than his academic work um, and subsequently he really wasn't getting anywhere academically speaking. And so we're actually dealing with kids who are really at critical risk in terms of their ongoing involvement with school. Yeah, it's better than school, obviously. Um, it's more social, so teachers aren't going at you really. Um, pretty much just an opportunity to get out of school just to get away from all the crap at school and then get into the workforce and actually have something to do with life and actually get into it. There's not so many students around, so teachers are focusing on you, not all the other students. Many of these students, because of past experience in terms of home dysfunction, in terms of um, school experiences that haven't worked for them and in terms of their own personal lives, the moment they had some sort of a failure, they tended to want to withdraw from the program. I used to say before that Casey was the kind of kid that if you sort of came up against him and sort of tried to push him in a direction, he would bash up against you and just fight. I found it a lot easier because it was more one-on-one -on -one with teachers. Our teachers in the Gateway program um, worked with the students on a one-to-one -one basis, so each teacher had their own group of students. And often that became important when they were attempting to re-engage students who had felt like they'd failed at something and didn't want to uh, continue participating. My colleague Ada and myself have been involved in the introduction and development of the Gateway Program, a social inclusion initiative. Social inclusion has become a priority for the state government to reduce unemployment, address the needs of low-income earners, provide opportunities for those with poor education attainment and low skill levels. These guys in this program have been absolutely brilliant. They haven't um, disciplined Casey into it. They've just accepted him as he is, um, given him a few personal skills that he can deal with the things that he, he needs to deal with. And it's been excellent. And I'm really very appreciative of, of what you've done. It takes an initial entry meeting, which is held within the school personnel with ISBMs, which are from interagency, with the parents or caregivers and ourselves? Well, I wasn't really sure to begin with, and I was hoping that it would help with a boost of confidence or to get him uh, interested in something, because he seemed to have no direction. Well, the Social Inclusion Board, in conjunction with the Department of Education and Children's Services, are focusing on improving school retention rates and increasing sustainable opportunities for youth employment. We don't enrol students in our Gateways program, Referrals to the program come from the district office on behalf of the schools that they work with. And I think a clear distinction has to be made about the importance of that because as a program working in the education department, Beefwood Education Centre, specifically the Gateways program, works very closely and collaboratively with the district office in the delivery of this program. And I think that's one thing that's really appreciated by schools. That they see a strong connection between services such as ours and other services that operate out of the district office dealing directly with the schools. It's within that initial entry meeting that we have an understanding of where the student is at in the sense of how anti-school they have become over the years. With Jared meeting the staff, um, which are caring, um, they talk to him and help him with um, issues that he had in life. Um, 
I found Jared's attitude had reduced quite a lot to a better person. As a member of the two-person teaching team, we have developed an alternative program that caters for students who are disengaged with current school or education programs who exhibit behaviours that preclude their participation. And we actually go to the students rather than the students attend us. One of the main reasons why the students have been disengaged for a period of time and have been unsuccessful in their mainstream schooling is because of the traditional classroom environment and the way that they perceived conventional teaching practice to be carried out. This program is specifically designed to cater for 15 year old plus in the five districts serviced by Beetford Education Centre, Barossa, Kamanka, Salisbury, East and North East. The idea of the mobile classroom at its simplest level is saying that many of the students who come into the Gateways program are not interested in re-attending school, or so they think. Um, and if we were to offer a program that was based upon come to the Beefield site and work here, almost always the response would be one that they would say they wouldn't show up, they just wouldn't be here. Um, and so what we did was to rethink that and say, well, first of all, we have to engage the students where they're at. So that was the concept of being mobile, of going to where they were. But we extended that to then saying that there are a lot of other classrooms out in the community that we can access. Um, it became important to make sure that the program had access to a small minivan that we had as a part of the Beefield Education uh, programs. And that then enabled the teachers to work with the students so that, you know, as strange as it may sound, but for those who work in this area, it's quite normal. Um, picking these students up sometimes at arranged spots has to happen initially in order to engage them. It means a lot of persistence and it means a lot of following through and sometimes it means fair few home visits just to simply know that we're hanging in there and we're prepared to touch base with these students. Um, I learned how to control my behaviour a lot more. Like I'm not so violent towards people at first where I used to be. Um, yeah, I've come a long way. One of our group sessions that we run is personal development and we deliver that using the rooms at Second Story in Hyde Street. My colleague and I run sexual health and relationships and drug education, which is the harmonisation approach as reinforced and supported by the drug strategy team. Within that, we address the students' wellbeing. Being students at risk, we address their well-being so they can make proper and appropriate informed decisions about the choices that they make in life regarding safe sex practices and also regarding exposure to drugs which is around society in general. They actually really engage very well in our, in our personal development program because it's very hands-on activities and a lot of group work involved. We also run a program called Work Ready. We use the facilities at the Youth Education Centre, also known as McGill Flexi Centre. We use their rooms as well, whereby we deliver resume and portfolios. We also deliver a lot of standalone VET modules in the core component of employment skills training. The advantages we have of working with partnerships is that we actually are bringing the students out into the community and they're exposing themselves to other agencies once the program and the vocational pathway is completed with us.